I'm not complaining. I have a boat. I'm just bitching. So, today's project, it's Sunday by the way, Sunday's my easy day, but apparently this isn't going to be too easy. So anyways, today's project is to reconnect the wiring that was either cut when I bought the boat, or cut when I started the remodel. Because, you see these wiring, these cables here, this is all 12 volt, this is 120 volt. Um, what we what what this did was all these cables came through now if you, have, if you go back and look at my previous videos there was no headliner up here and these these cables were all attached to the fiberglass and then covered by the headliner so it came actually came it comes through the electrical panel up front and it comes back behind these cabinets comes out up here and it went out and then up and around and through here and then through this cabinet and then up over top of these galley cabinets but when I started to put this headliner in the wiring was in my way and I said screw that if you remember I tore all this out and rebuilt it and I built these cabinets and what I did was I cut the wires in the middle. I labeled, lab, put two labels on, one here, one here, and then cut there. So, let's see, here's, here's an example. This is wire T. So I had a T there, a T here, and then I cut between the two T's. So now I have my end on this, on the port side, and I have an end on the starboard side, and I have to connect them somewhere. Now they're going to be short. So these are the wires that go from the galley side, and are supposed to feed back this way to the electrical panel. And they used to go around up top, and again, over the top, but I cut them up here. Now I rerouted them down behind this propane locker on the outside. It goes down into this cabinet, and I'm going to poke them through down here under the bunk. And I'm going to reroute all of these down under the bunk. And I'm going to make them up down in here somewhere. Haven't figured out exactly where yet, but I have some terminal blocks and wire um, waterproof wire crimps and that is the project for today it's going to be a bitch like everything else out here has been but here we go I'm going to get on it so I got my wires poked through I drilled a hole up underneath the, the hose here and that's the end of those that's the starboard side of the wires and then I have You'll notice there's more wires on the port than there is on the starboard. And that is because two of these, these two, actually three of these, I'm gonna stuff them down out of my way for now. I'll worry about them later. Those go to my radar arch. So I wanted to make a note. This is coming from the panel through the cabinetry all the way from the uh, mid, mid of the over from the nav station 
So I got those coming here. I drilled a hole under there to bring them out. And then I'm going to secure these up underneath here like this. So they'll be up out of the way. That way we have use of this. This is going to get... All this will be cleaned up. But I wanted to make a special note to you out there if you don't know this. Back behind this drawer, or this drawer, between one of these two drawers, is my uh, gyro, gyro compass. I don't know what it's called. It's a gyro thingamajiggy for the autopilot. And then kind of right above us here, by about six feet away, is the, um, the main binnacle. Whenever you're doing wiring on a boat that has a sensitive electronic navigational equipment, you want to make sure you do not coil your wires. You want straight runs. They can run parallel together like this, that's fine. But you don't want to have like loops. Like say you wanted to have extra wire here for future whatever. You just don't want to create a loop anywhere near your sensitive electronic equipment because that loop creates an electromagnetic force and that will throw off your navigation your compasses um, electronic or analog it'll throw them both off by creating that magnetic force so something to keep in mind no loops in your wiring This is not where this goes, by the way. It goes back. I have to cut the cut the hole out. And why is it? Why is it every single project on a boat has to be difficult? It's like every space is too small. Every angle is wrong. Uh, I'm right-handed, so of course everything is easy for the left hand to get in but hard for the right I'm not complaining I have a boat I'm just bitching all right there's that wire I'm gonna start mounting terminal blocks in here today I'll give you a walkthrough on that later Time for a break. We got a package today. Two packages. Today's the day after Christmas, by the way, December 26, 2018. I know what one of the things in here is. 
Very, very important. Oh, yeah. Ooh, two things are really good. One is, I'm in the, I'm in the boat yard here, and um, they don't have a 30 amp plug-in. Odd. I know. So I have a 30 amp twist lock adapter to a 15 amp plug. So I can plug this into the boat and now I can run the cord, regular old extension cord to this. Because right now I have the cord running through my port light or sometimes through my companion way. And uh, it's a pain in the ass. All right, we have a blue C fuse block. I'll show you where that goes later. Have some more crimps. And the thing I've been waiting on, my battery charger. This is gonna mount in that closet I built back in the aft head. So, the nice thing about this particular charger is it's a 20 amp charger and um, it takes three battery banks. So I can have a house bank, I can have my windless bank, which is a single battery, and then my engine, which is a single battery. Of course, the engine one, if I'm starting the engine, it should run off, it, the, the engine should charge it, it should charge everything. but. The nice thing about this is it's a 20 amp and a lot of these chargers is say let's say 20 amps if this was a three bank charger at 20 amps it would actually split the 20 amps between the three so it would be like let's just say 6.3 amps per or 6.33 amps per whatever the calculation is the 20 amps would be split between three banks. And if one bank is fully charged, the other two banks still only get their division of amps. With this charger, it determines what bank is the lowest. Let's say two of the banks are fully charged, all of the 20 amp charge will go to the single bank and split up however it needs to split it up. Long explanation, I know, but that's the beauty of this particular charger. All right, we're gonna unload my Amazon box, and uh, I got a bunch of 12 volt power supply stuff going here. Let's see what we got. These I had in stock. Got my red, white, and black tie wraps. I have my Corrosion X terminal blocks with covers. I have a 200 amp fuse with a spare fuse. There is my, my red and black large cable terminal blocks so all my big battery cables are going to terminate on these we have tape electrical tape scotch 35 we got green white red yellow we got two yellows and two blacks so black, yellow, red, white, and green. All the colors I need for my power distribution system. We have marine grade wire splicers. Two GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupters. One will go in the head and feed both heads and then one will go in the galley and feed all the countertops so if you don't know what a ground fault is it's the thing with the little push buttons keep 
prevent you from getting shocked. I have two battery terminals. Batteries are under here, by the way, right under there. Brand new batteries. I got crimps. These are marine grade tinned copper. Four gauge. One gauge. One aught gauge. Number 12 spade connectors. Fork connectors, excuse me. Marine grade waterproof shrink type. Shrink tube number tw uh, 14 and 16. And then I have battery cables. I got 25 feet of number two. Tinned copper with number two connectors. And it came with a shrink tube. I have a 100 foot roll of number 14 tinned copper Romex type wire hydraulic wire crimping tool for crimping battery cables and this actually will go down to uh, number 8 wire up to uh, 2 aught so 2 aught to number 8 heat gun my trusty lineman's pliers I've had these for 25 plus years in case anybody doesn't know this is actually what I do for a living I'm an electrician my fluke amp probe voltage tester and amperage tester fluke one of the best you can buy if, if you're wondering Want to get one for yourself? Fluke. Had this for probably close to 20 years. Still going strong. Those are the two old batteries that came with the boat. I'm charging them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'll probably end up trading them in for some new ones. But I just want to charge them up and see what we get out of them. And then down here is my battery compartment. Those are two brand new 230 amp hour 6 volt batteries. I'm going to tie them into series, make 12 volts. Then I'm going to have another set over here. Those will run in parallel. So we'll have two banks of 12 volt. I don't know what this is. Hope it's not something private. It's not private. Sixty amp fuse holder. Um, I forget what these called A and L fuses. Um, it comes with the holder, and then two fuses, so you get one spare. Um, I think these are like thirteen dollars. I bought several of them in different sizes. 60 amp, 100 amp, 200 amp, 300 amp. <coughs> so we just got another delivery from Amazon. This is a uh, a battery filler. You fill this up with your distilled water. And then you push this down into the thing and you, when you push it, see that thing goes like this and then it, the water flows and then when it reaches the nozzle the water stops so fill the battery when you hear it stop gurgling that that cell is done next cell push cell is done waste of five bucks right there two more bus bars this is a 100 amp shunt and a digital multimeter 
right now the meters in my panel are um, analog which I like but if this works out and it fits in there nice I might replace the analog with these digital ones you'll see it later when I get it turned on but so yeah this is a multimeter it does volt keep the monitors the battery voltage how much charge is left amp hours used um, whatever all that kind of stuff two more fuses a 300 amper and a 600 amp or excuse me a 300 and a 100 inline fuses for miscellaneous things VHF radio electronics uh, things up at the cockpit whatever 220 piece automotive fuse blade type so lots and lots of electrical stuff it's almost like Christmas Later.